Hi, I'm Dr. Heath. I'm a psychoanalyst. Why are some things creepy? Sure, some things are scary, like if they put you in danger or something like that. But there's another level where the thing is not just suspenseful, but downright creepy. What does creepy mean, anyway? It's a feeling, but it's a strange one. Kind of like a scary version of awe. Sigmund Freud wrote a paper on creepiness. It sat in a drawer for five years before he could finish it. He figured out that the thing that's creepy is also familiar in a creepy sort of way. Freud said that creepy things remind us of beliefs long put away. See, during childhood, we believe things that as adults, we forget. That inanimate objects have life, that thoughts can cause things to happen. See, these beliefs get packed away because we experience and are taught otherwise, but there's not that much holding them back. What if ghosts do exist? What if you can wish someone dead just by thinking about it? So when we see things that defy reality, it carries this uncanny quality. Sure, some things like magic tricks or creative acts of music or art can have some uncanny quality. But Freud was asking something specific. He was asking, what is creepy? And why do we feel that emotion? Some things don't make sense through our adult eyes, like toys that come to life. We once believed they did, and how do we know they don't? The layer of repression that keeps these beliefs down is really thin. Death is one of the most difficult things to deal with. We can barely comprehend it anyway. So what if someone makes up a story about zombies or vampires where the dead come back to life? Not only is it a scary idea, but it disrupts the fragile understanding we do have. Even scarier is when these things happen suddenly. It underscores the gray boundary between reality and unreality. At haunted houses, the actors use these factors to make things extra scary. I spent some time with Julia. She's an actress who works at haunted houses. Let's hear some of her experience. So there's something about the contrast between the stillness and the suddenness mm -hmm. of the movement that in and of itself is scary. Right. The stillness is when it's well lit enough that you see everything and you're expecting something, yeah. but you're not sure where it's coming from. The lot of noise, the coming at you, most of that will be done in darker rooms. I see. And then you'll have, yeah. so it's almost that same effect. There is stillness everywhere until there's, you know, a light that goes off and it's somebody's there. Um, you, you know, from the shadow see something. One of the most, uh, one of the most effective rooms that I was ever a part of it um, they had gotten a from a junkyard an old you know plane just a small little teeny tiny propeller plane and they had crashed it in a room and they had made the rest of it you know all jungles and stuff like that and so then they dressed us up and I was hanging out of the window. Now we had a bunch of other dummies that were strewn about the room. And so I was just hanging over the side. I would let most of a group go by. And then that last person, I mean, it was just the simple. And we all had, you know, crazy contacts and stuff like that. But that was actually also the room that I got punched. Sure. <laughs> and so yeah. it was a smaller group and it was a, you know, big macho guy and he was walking through with his girlfriend and his girlfriend was, you know, would get her foot and like touch one of the mannequins and jump and scream. <laughs> and he just thought that was ridiculous. She was being silly. And so he came over and to be fair, they kept the room freezing. And so he came over and he pushed at me and I didn't move. And he's like, see, they're fake. It's not a big deal. What? And he turned to talk to her. Oh and when he turned back, I just had my head up. And yeah. that's when I got socked. Uh, but <laughs> he's like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I know I did my job. He was horrified. Oh, he was horrified. <laughs> His girlfriend, I'm so sorry. Another category of thing that kids believe is that their thoughts can have actions in external reality. So stories about witchcraft and curses quickly break through that little wall of repression. We know it's not true, at least as it appears, but there was a time we did believe that. We're not indifferent to the creepy and uncanny. We're actually drawn to it. Something that is genuinely unknown. I think yeah. there's something that's very appealing about that. And you're entertaining the ideas like UFOs. Why do you enjoy uh, entertaining that the person that's in makeup is you know, actually something that's out to get you versus Jim who works at 
Target and, you know, just was able to do this on the weekends. In that moment, when I'm scared of the person, somehow I lose the sight that they're Jim. They're, I might even know Jim. He may have invited you to the haunted house and said, you should come and see this. And I'm like, you're scary, man. Right. The ability of your brain to jump to those just crazy conclusions that you have no proof on yeah. is just insane. Uh, 10,000 years ago when crops would die or if they had a, b a bad year, uh, would it be because the gods were displeased or because they did something kind of mysterious wrong instead of that they didn't line up the crops in a correct way uh, to catch the sun or they planted too early? So I guess it's useful to have this kind of uh, curiosity about the what we call supernatural. I think so. So enjoy the creepy stuff. It lives in us. It's part of our past and our present. Thanks for watching. I'm here on YouTube Thursdays, 7 Central. And please consider contributing. I've got a Patreon page. Check it out. The link should be right here. Thanks. See you next time.